Okay, let's talk about chapter four now. Um, you can do a lot. Chapter four, be sure to read chapter four very carefully. Um, here's a kind of thing you, you can do. You may not have any idea how to do this yet, how to, how to uh, get the area enclosed by four cities, perhaps. Um, you can do this. Um, here's the objectives. I'm not going to go through this in detail. I'm going to go through this quickly and just for you to... Um, I'll give you my two cents about various things, and but you need to go through all of this. This is all, all important stuff here. Um, so a, as you know, there's lots of library functions that Java and every every language has, and math class with the Java. You have the pi and the e constants. You have trig, trig methods, exponents, roundings, etc. Min, max, absolute values, all those things. So if you need to use you know, sines and cosines and things like that, you think maybe I never will. But if you're going to write a game that has something that moves like a, a, a parabola, you know, you throw a ball or a missile or something like that, you're going to be using math, you're going to be using trig. Um, so yeah, you, programmers have to use uh, trig. Um, exponents, sometimes you have to use exponents. So here in Java, you use a, 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 a POW, POW, um, the power, which turns a power of B. You also can do square roots, logarithmic, you know, things like that. Um, Rounding methods, very important. Um, you, you, you'll have opportunity to use these a lot. Um, ceiling, um, might have used that in, in the first class. Um, so you're finding a ceiling, round it up to the nearest integer, or the floor, rounding down to the nearest integer. So you've got to decide which way you want to, to round. And then there's all, uh, all other kinds also. And here, here's some examples. So you go through these in detail. Stop the, you know, go ahead and stop the video and, and uh, take a look at this in more detail so you can understand it before, before moving on. Um, min, max, those are important to, to use. Um, sometimes, rather than having to figure out yourself, you just do a min and max between two numbers, and boom, you're done. Okay. Absolute value also is important. Um, getting a random number, of course, gets a ra getting a random number in Java in, in many languages um, between zero and, and, and one. And then you have to expand out the numbers to the range that you want to actually have. Okay, I'm going to skip all that. Um, the character that data type is is very important. Um, it comes in very very handy. So definitely read through the uh, characters. Here's is just a one one character, one string, you know, one text or one number, you know, one one thing. Um, Unicode. In, in the beginning, there was ASCII, and then that wasn't enough really. Um, there wasn't enough codes for all the languages in the world. So they created Unicode, which has you know lots and lots. In this case, 65,535 plus one characters. So there's a lot of characters. You could, that way you can have all the you know, Chinese and Japanese and all the other characters that, that uh, people use throughout the world. Um, ASCII codes, so zero to nine or 48 to 57. Capital A and small a are different codes because they're different things, right? So inside the computer, remember it's all zeros and ones. So, but it gets, you know, abstracted up into an A, a, a small a, or a large a, or all the way through Z. And you have Unicode values also. So if you look under the covers, you'll see, eventually, you'll, you'll see some Unicode and, or ASCII code, and then eventually you'll see zeros and ones. So that's all, that's all there is in the, in the uh, computer. Um, so some special characters, backspace, tab. Some of these are just are kind of legacy from when they when they had teletypes and things were physically you know, chunking paper through and that kind of thing. But so, some of them are still still uh, uh, used. Uh, we'll use the slash n here. I'm gonna do this guy here right here uh, quite a bit. So you just put that inside a, a string you know, inside inside two quotes, and the slash tells its escape character tells Java, oh, what well, well, we're gonna do something after that. Oh, n that's a, a new line. So you could use a slash n to go to a, a new line. Instead of using the print line, you could put a bunch of slash n's, it'll just do a whole bunch of new, new lines. Okay. If you need, need to put a, to print a, a, a double quote, slash double quote, that, that, that allows you to put, print a double quote. Because you can't put just quotes, because Java would think that's the beginning and ending of a string in, in the system out print line, right? So you do a slash quote, now that tells Java, oh, I'm not ending it, I'm just going to print this print this quote. And you can look at look online, you can look in our book, and you can see various character sets. So here you can see the zero right here. That's 48. 48 is the zero. 49 is one. So you kind of read this. This is the first side over here. So, you know, that's how that works. 
There's an ASCII character set for hexadecimal data. And you could cast between integers and characters and that kind of thing. So um, comparing and testing characters, we'll, we'll, we'll do this in class actually uh, as one of our exercises. Um, so you can compare characters to single, notice it's a single quote, not a double quote. That, in, that shows it's a character. So if the character is between greater than A and the character is less than Z, then it's uppercase little letter because you're basically comparing the, the values of A and Z, um, capital. Small a, small z, if it's between those two as a character, then it's a lowercase letter. Between 0 and 9, it's a numeric character. So you can, you can identify these, these things. That comes in handy when you're do, doing string uh, manipulations. Various met methods that you can read through here. Um, is it a letter? Is it a digit? Is it a letter of a digit? You know, is it lowercase, uppercase? All, all, all those kind of things. Okay, strings. So strings are something you use all the time and you use in the past for sure. So String, it's not a primitive, remember, because it's not an int. It's not a double with a small d. It's known as a, a reference type. It's a capital S string. So message, welcome to, to, to Java. Um, and we'll, we'll talk more about strings uh, later in Chapter 9, as it says here. But we're going to talk about basically the library functions today. So we have the length. You can turn the length of, of, of the string, which is very important. You want to know that a lot, a lot of times. Um, you can get a character at, at a particular index. So I want to get the character at the 10th the tenth character of the string. You want to know what that is, perhaps. Um, you want to concatenate two strings. And you can do the plus sign also, but concatenating. You could convert it to uppercase, lowercase, or you could trim. trim. Trimming means taking the spaces off each end. So if someone said, you ask someone to put in their name and they put space, 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 and then Bob, and then space, space, you don't want the spaces in your database. You just want the Bob. So you could trim the, trim the string and then just have Bob in, in your database. Okay, so let's see. Um, simple methods. String, I'm not going to go with that. Um, yeah, so here's how you would use the length. So we have a message. Message is a string, is a string and message.length. And notice it has a, a parentheses here. Um, that means length is a, is a method within the string program. And you're going to call that, and it's going to return the value. And so this, this string length zero, whatever it is, the length this message is. So that comes in handy. Um, getting characters from a string is, is really important to uh, be able to do. So you want to get certain characters. So message at character at zero would be the W here. Message length is 15. So if you do the message character at 14, you know, length minus one, then you're going to get the last character. So you get the first and last character pretty e easily of, of a string. Uh, that, again, that comes in handy, especially when you, want to, when you want to loop through a string looking for something. Say you're doing a... Uh, a a game of some kind, like a Hangman or something like that, where you're manipulating strings and looking through strings. You have welcome to lowercase. So you can do welcome in, in uh, as a uh, numeric literal, a, um, a literal here, a string literal. Welcome with, with double quotes to lowercase. Welcome to uppercase. Welcome trim. Trims the welcome. And, of course, these could be variables that contain that. So here we have an example of concatenating. So you got, you know, you, I'm sure you use string S1 plus S2 before to concatenate strings. You can also do the S1 concat S2. You can do that too. So here's three strings concatenated with the plus sign. And we can go through this later. Um, let's see. Reading a string, you, use, you can input next. You can do next line. Um, here's the next line here. So you can go through this in detail. Pause the video. Take a look at it. Read every line. Get as much as you can from this. You know, don't waste your time just kind of browsing over this and, and just kind of letting me talk and you just kind of letting me talk and not, not paying attention. Stop the video, look through this every single line and make sure you understand what's going on so that you can internalize it. And, and when you see it next time or when you have to use this, you can pull it out of your brain. If it's not in your brain, you can't pull it out, right? So you need to, need to take a look at this. Okay, if you're going to compare strings, um, I'm sure you all, all remember you can't just use an equal sign. Um, or equal, equal, equal sign. You have to use the equals. You have to use, use the method, the function um, for the string. Does S1 equals S, or S2 equal S1? And that returns true if it equals. You can do equals ignore case. It comes in handy. You can compare to. So compare to is interesting because it returns an integer um, greater than zero if one's equal, greater than another, or if it's equal or if it's less than. Um, so that's kind of, you know, these are three different different uh, versions. So then you have if statements to, to take care of that. 
And you can compare it to ignore case, same thing as compare to, but ignoring the case. Starts with prefix, comes in handy. Maybe you just want to know um, what the beginning of somebody, what a, somebody has entered in, like Monday. Do they put in an M? If they put in M, you're going to lose Monday, no matter what they put in, possibly. Um, ends with, you may want it ends with. So you need to know these exist. Substrings, this is really, really important to be able to do this, especially if you're going to manipulate strings, say you're doing a text game, something like that, or hangman or something like that. Anything with strings, with text, with, with words. You need to get, need to know how to find this word with the space and what the next word is, the next word, to be able to parse it out and be able to get, get the words and then, then have if statements to decide what to do with these, these words. So here we have a message substring zero for a length of 11. So it starts at zero and goes for 11. So that starts with zero, goes to 10, because remember, it starts at zero. Message substring 11, that means start at 11 and go to the end. So if you just put one thing in there, it starts at one, and goes, goes to the end there. So you need to know how to do substrings for sure. And you can do index ofs. Um, so what's the index of something? You know, we'll show you an example here. Suppose you have two names. You know, here we have Kim Jones. We want to want to break up Kim and Jones. Well, we have int k, the, the string index of the space. Where's the first space? It finds it here. It's, it's gonna be three. So k is now three. So now you know where the space is. So now you can get a substring, zero through k is gonna be zero for a length of three, zero, one, two, three. That gets the first name. So you can pull out a name now from anything, any well, the first word up to a space from, from any string. That, that comes, that's very powerful. So you need to un really understand how this works. Then, then to get the second name, you start over here, sub S substring K plus one is going to start there and then go to the end. And that gets you the second word. And you could go from string to string to string, from, from word to word to word. It was delimited by, by spaces. So you need to understand it. So it's, Pause the video if you don't understand this and go through it in detail so you understand how the substrings work. Okay, um, conversion strings and numbers. Yeah, so if you have, you have a number, you can make it a string, string S equals number, just by putting in a null, a null string. And Java says, oh, okay, you mean that to be a, a string. So that's pretty easy to do. You also do a parse double. And you, and this is to go to, to a from string to, to a uh, double or parse int to go from string to an integer. Um, yeah, so you need to go back and forth sometimes. So you need to know how to do that. This is an interesting, interesting program. So take a look in the book and look in detail how, how this program works. Um, but very, it's very interesting. And show, this is a little bit about the math about it. Um, so programmers use a lot of math. Don't think you're not going to use math. Um, you will. Uh, how to convert hexadecimal to a decimal. Look in the book for, for that. Look in the book for that also. Um, formatting. Look at the book for this also. We're going to use this in our labs, and we use it a lot. So system out printf. So this is a way to format data. In the first class, you asked how do we get rid of, you know, when you divide something and you have decimals out, you know, 16 characters out to the right right of the, the decimal. How, how do we trim that off? Well, this this allows you to trim off the decimal. It's like, say, numbers or something like that. So look in the book. Um, it's a good, just a couple pages, and it shows you how, how to use the specifiers we use mostly you know, D, decimal, um, you know, floating point number, um, Boolean values, and strings. So mostly strings and, and decimals and in integers. Um, so, so basically, you have system out printf, just like print line or print, and you have the string that you're going to print, and inside the string, you embed what's going to be there. So this is a D, that's going to be a decimal integer, and the amount is F, that's going to be a floating point integer. And then you have after you close off that string, comma, then you have what the first one replies to and what the second variable is. So this amount there. So this pound sign D tells, or the, not, sorry, this uh, percentage sign D says what what to do with that. So in this case, it's going to display just the whole whole decimal. But if you want to trim it, let's see, have an example here. Oh, don't, don't have examples here. Yeah, yeah, you have to look in the in the book to see how to trim it. There's different different ways where you put 10.2 or whatever over here um, after this. Now, and the book will show you some examples of that. Okay, so read the book. Definitely read this format part. You'll be using that a lot. We'll do that as one of the exercises, and we'll and we'll be using that in every every lab for the rest of of the time. Okay, see ya.